Hi, I'm Sam and this is my clip talk. Um, I chose to investigate a scene um, from Knives Out and it was directed by Ryan Johnson. It came out in 2019. Um, so I wanted to give like a little bit of a brief background on what happens in the movie so that you're not super lost watching the scene. Um, so it's basically about this crime novelist named Harlan Thrombey. He's played by Christopher Plummer and um, he has like a very mysterious death and um, he basically is really rich so he makes a lot of money and um, his whole family is trying to decide like who like got cut out of the will. Um, they all think that they're all gonna get like a piece of his property or some of his money or whatever the case may be. Um, so then there's two detectives that are investigating his death because they think it could have been a murder. So um, in this scene, it's about 45 minutes into the movie and we're introduced to a character named Ransom, who's Harlan's grandson. And um, Ransom has been cut out of Harlan's will. And that's pretty much all you need to know from that part. Um, Harlan also has a caretaker. Her name is Marta and she's basically like his nurse. Um, so she just comes to our house and takes care of him because he's he was older when he died. So um, yeah. So the question that I wanted basically to answer for you, so my thesis question, was that Ryan Johnson, the director, um, really encapsulates how like eccentric and kind of off kilter the whole Thromby family is because there's a lot of them, um, especially in this scene, there's a lot of them. He likes to have a bunch of people in frame all at one time. So um, I just realized that a lot of it came from his like masterly use of like really purposeful camera work and a lot of mise-en-scene in the scene and so I'm gonna be investigating that. Okay so starting off with this shot, um, actually in a number of shots within this scene there are multiple characters included in the frame and they're often standing on different planes to give the frame some depth. Um, so the technique also gets more value out of which like famous actors are on set so to give them more screen time. Um, so Johnson places actors on a triangular shape in a few different shots, this one being one of them. So we see Harlan's daughter Linda right in the middle of the frame with her brother Walt, who's played by Michael Shannon on her right, and her husband Richard, who's played by Don Johnson, as well as Ransom on the left. It's the same kind of idea as the um, triangular shape to give the frame some depth. So in this frame depicted are Donna, who's played by Ricky Lindholm, Joni, who's played by Tony Collette, and Meg Thromby. Um, who's played by Katherine Langford, and we see Meg leaning over a couch in the middle and the two older women sitting on either side of it. So this shape in both of the shots gives the frame like a more balanced look with one actor in the middle and one or more on either side of him or her. This is another shot that I noticed has a lot of depth. Um, so in this frame we see Detective Blanc in the front, Marta, who's Harlan's caregiver and, you know, argu arguably the main character who's played by Ana de Armas, um, standing like slightly behind him and then Detective Trooper Wagner who's played by Noah Segan who's a little bit of out of focus behind them um, and cleverly the director Johnson also used a frame photo of Harlan um, as a prop on the back of the wall to provide like even more depth to the shot. This is also a really interesting sequence that's within the scene that I wanted to point out. Um, so in the sequence, Ransom is having two conversations at once, one with his parents, Linda and Richard, and one with Joni. So to give the illusion of both conversations without having everyone in the frame at one time, Johnson filmed two different angles of Ransom simultaneously, which um, covered both of the eyeline mat shots, and so it cuts back and forth between Ransom, his parents, and Joni. So in this frame, we see Ransom's left side profile from Linda's point of view, which is over Richard's shoulder. And then depicted here is a shot of the right side of Ransom's face where he's looking off screen to the left where Joni is sitting. So the two separate conversations and eyeline matches in one scene must have been like incredibly hard to execute. Starting with this first shot that we looked at, um, I just wanted to note that there was like plenty of mise-en-scene aspects in the scene that gave it a really like realistic appearance. So for example, the set in the movie is a real mansion in Massachusetts. Um, and it was filled with like a ton of different props like portraits, sculptures, other works of art, um, and plenty of like antiques and other items on the tables so that the viewer always has something to look at. Um, so fortunately for him, the way his um, crew decided to set everything up was that the large number of props in the background of his shots didn't look too busy. 
And again, coming back to the shot of Ransom looking off at Joni, who he's having a conversation with, um, I think lighting is also a major aspect of mise-en-scene that sometimes gets um, overlooked. So Ransom is looking off screen at Joni and his face on the left side of the frame is shadowed and on the right side it's really well lit. Um, so this is to resemble the natural light that would have been coming from the window, which we know to be on the other side of the room. Um, though the window light was actually used during filming, so there was no need to add too much fill light, but the lighting and the window light both come together to produce this. And finally, I think that the blocking portion of mise-en-scene is insanely important to the filming of any movie, as most attention is on the actors, so cleverly, director Johnson used um, blocking towards the end of the scene to sort of guide the viewer into the next scene. So here we can see um, the camera cuts to Detective Blanc here, who's tossing the baseball that he had been holding into the air. He catches it again and then walks off. So this action highlights how fed up he is with the thrombies, as well as the importance of the baseball in the next scene, which um, in the next scene, he throws it for a dog who leads him to a clue about Harlan's death. So I thought it was really interesting that the director Ryan Johnson was able to kind of take so many different um, types of shots and have so much going on in the background and the mise-en-scene and everything um, when he was directing this movie to just show how kind of crazy this whole family is and to get so many people in frames and so many people having conversations all at one time. So I thought that his use of camera work and mise-en-scene were super effective in doing that. 